Hello, welcome to Dimension Quest. In this week's video, I'll walk through the steps required to automatically mount Windows shares on Linux using Ubuntu 2204 Jammy Jellyfish. While there are a number of ways to do this, AutoFS, FSTAB, and credential files, login scripts, those aren't really what I'll be focusing on. My preference is using PAM mount. The benefits that I've found using libpam mount are, number one, it's easy to set up. Number two, you've got global and user-managed config files that you can work with. It works with Active Directory domain accounts or standalone servers. An additional password is not required beyond the initial login. Password is not required to be stored in a plain text credential file. And the volumes are unmounted on logout. So for this week's video, I have a fresh install of Ubuntu 2204.1 LTS desktop. The only changes that I've done here are, let's see, it's a minimal installation. So I don't, I don't have a lot of extra packages installed. I've made a slight adjustment so that the overview doesn't show up when I first log into the desktop here. And I've installed RDP so that I could do my screen capture through an RDP console. Other than that, there are no extra library files installed. This desktop is not joined to the Active Directory domain and I'm simply logged in as my build user account, which happens to be dev user one. Now, a key point here is this dev user one account has the same password as my Active Directory account. It's just a local account, not the AD account, but I am using the same password. And that's important because the way this libpam mount works is it uses those credentials to try mounting the particular share, whether it's a SIF share that's running on a Windows server a Samba server, or some NAS device that you have that is serving up SIFs or Samba shares. Since that password matches, it will go ahead and mount if things are configured properly and if the user account has permission for that particular mount. So let's go ahead and get started. There's not too many things that you need to install in order to get this working. First up, let's go ahead and open up a terminal window. And we'll want to install our required files or our required libraries, and that'll be libpam-mount and sifs-utils. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so let me show you some of the things that that installation just did. First off, it has created some config files and it has made an edit or an update to some existing config files. So let's take a look. Let's switch over to our root account. There we go. Now, if we go into the slash etc slash pam.d folder, specifically, we want to take a look at the common dash auth and the common dash session. So let's take a look at common dash auth first. So the line that was added here when we just installed that libpam mount is this right here, auth optional pam underscore mount dot so. So when pam is, oh, that's pluggable authentication module for those of you that are new to Linux. So what PAM is doing is it loads up all of these different files in this folder in a specific order. And in particular, it will go through and load up all of these different modules. So if we don't have this PAM underscore mount module loaded here, then when you log in, your config files that say what to mount where will not get processed. This processes your authentication. And the other piece here, let's take a look at the other file that I mentioned, session. There we go, session optional. So that carries your session details over to your PAM mount module. So those two entries were added to those respective files. And the other config file that was created for all of this is in the slash etc slash security folder. Take a look in there. And the file that we want to look at in particular is this one here pam underscore mount dot conf dot xml. So this is your system pam mount configuration file. At this point, we don't currently have a user specific config file defined. 
or residing in the user's home directory. Let's take a look and inside this pem underscore mount config file. Okay, so if we scroll down here, debug enable. Now you don't want to keep this turned on, but if you change the zero to a one here, you'll be able to have additional information for troubleshooting. This comes in real handy because I have seen that there's um, a, a difference in the way the user account is passed into the Linux operating system and the whole PAM security stuff here, depending on what you're using to log in the system, whether it's logging in directly via your console, via RDP, or via something like VMware's Horizon desktops. That Horizon agent will pass in the user account name based on how the Horizon configuration is, is set up. But we're not doing any of that here, um, but it is still a good idea initially to go ahead and set this debug enable to one so that you can see any extra details. Now next, we'll take a look at the volume definitions there. You can see here that the start comment line of the volume definitions is there, and then beneath that it has a marker for PAM mount parameters and general tunables. So here within volume definitions, this is where you'll put in your global volume mappings, right? So let's go ahead and go into insert mode here, and we'll just come in there, and I will add in a pair of lines that will configure the system to do some specific mounts. Okay, yeah, let's widen this up so we can see the, the whole line there. There we go, okay. And let's look at this. So our volume options here, we're setting what options are being used. I won't go into details on those. If you're interested in them, I'll show you what the documentation is. In fact, I'll have that linked in the description of the video for PAM mount, as well as the PAM mount config file that we're editing here. Now user, this one here is kind of important because we have it set to asterisk, meaning that any user that logs into this system, this particular line will apply to that user. So in this case, we are saying that we should create a mount point under the user's home directory in a folder called shares, and that subdirectory should be public-shared. And that is going to be mounted to our server, which in this case is my domain controller, dc.lab.asbuild.dev, and the share that it's going to be mounted to is the public-shared. And the file system type is SIFS. Okay, now the next line I have slightly different here. I'm telling it to only apply to members of the group dev. All right, now again, we're going to go into the shares directory of the home folder, and we're gonna create a dev-team folder there, and that will be mounted to the dev team share on my domain controller. Now this domain controller is the same one that I set up in my earlier videos where I was showing how to set up Zential as an Active Directory domain controller for free. So let's go ahead and move down a little bit in our config file and take a look at what else is available here. All right, now we can see here that we have this luserconf name equals dot pam underscore mount dot conf dot XML. So this is the name of the file that you would put in a user's home directory if you want them to be able to set up their own list of mounted volumes. Currently, this line is commented out. So let's go ahead and uncomment that by deleting the comment line above it and the end comment line below it. Make sure you get both of those or you'll get an XML error and things won't process properly. Okay, going down, we can see what mount options are allowed. I'm sticking with all of the defaults here. The only thing that I changed away from default is the enable up there enabled the user specified config file, and I've defined two volume definitions. Looking further down, we can see what mount options are required. So these are the mount options that are allowed up here, and these are the two that re are required, right? So you can see that I'm only using the two required mount options. Now, if we scroll down even further, 
we can see that the make mount point enable is set to one and the remove equals true. So what this means is that in the home directory, if you don't have a shares folder and a dev dash team folder structure already created, when PAM mount goes to process this file, this says, go ahead and create that directory structure, right? So create the directory structure so that it can be mounted properly. And then the remove equals true means that when I log out of this system, those volumes will be unmounted. All right, that way if somebody else logs in or if someone else SSHs to this particular machine and they try looking in my home directory or looking at the mounts that have been defined, they will not be mounted to anything on the network. This could be a security risk because if I log in as an admin and I have some administrative shares that are mounted and someone else tries logging into my system while I'm not there or while when I'm logged out of it, then they won't be able to traverse the directory and see the network shares that I have authenticated into. So we're good here. All of our config is done. So let's go ahead and take this file name here for the user defined config and we'll just copy that. Now we're going to save this global system config file. There we go. Next, we will exit from our root account so that we are back to our dev user one account. And if we take a look here in our home directory, we can see that we don't currently have that user defined config file. So let's create it. And we need to fill it in with some information there. Okay, so I have prepared a sample that I will go ahead and paste in here. All right, so we're going to start off by defining that this is an XML document. And our root element here is our PAM underscore mount. I've got a comment here just showing that the examples that I'm using here are based on my previous video series with setting up the Zential domain controller. I am specifying that any user should be able to mount these particular shares from the server on these directories here. Now, if you take a look here, I'm using a system variable for the PAM mount system called percent %user in both cases here. So this is saying that if I'm logged in as dev user one to this local system, take that dev user one and check this server to see if there is a share that matches my name. So if I were to log in as Blab or VC admin or one of those other accounts, when this got processed, their username would be set here instead. Now, a good thing about this, having these uh, percent variables here is you can build this all out and you can save this user's directory into slash etc slash scale and use this as the template for all users that log in. If I were to put dev user one right here and right here, that would work for just this user, but not for any other users that logged into the system. All right, so we can see here that I have the public shared, which was already defined, so that doesn't need to be here with this user directory. There we go. Now we have our, our user's home directory on the domain controller, so I'm calling that domain-home. And then I have a QNAP NAS device that is serving up Windows-based file shares. And the directory on there that gets shared out is under homes and then the user's name. So we'll go ahead and save this file. And we can do a sudo login. Now this is going to simulate logging in to our desktop here. Now this is particularly handy when you have the debug enabled because you'll see a lot of text show up on the screen after I do this login. And we're going to log in as our dev user one account. We'll take a moment there to process. Now let's see if I could type the password correctly this time. There we go. So obviously I fat fingered something the first time. So we can see here that having that debug enabled 
set to one produces a lot of information here that is showing that PAM is checking the server to make sure that um, a folder exists. It's checking to make sure that this user account has permission to actually access that folder. And it's doing it not based on an Active Directory user account, but based on the username and password that has been specified. So this is why I like it because within my network, and I'm sure within your network, you may have an Active Directory domain controller. You may not. You might have Samba running as a dedicated uh, AD type of server, or you might simply have some other Linux machines or some NAS devices that are sharing out folders for yourself, for your family members, for friends, whatever the case may be. So we've got a bunch of log information here on the screen. Let's see if it actually worked. All right, so let's clear the screen. Let's check our home directory. And we can see here that now we do have a shares folder. So let's look inside that shares folder. We have our domain home, our NAS home, and our public shared. Let's go ahead and switch over to our Nautilus file browser. And we'll go into shares, domain home. There we go. So you can see this is the same folder that was created in my previous video when I was logged in as the dev user one account to a, the domain. And I created this folder from the Ubuntu desktop that had been joined to the domain. I modified the file inside of it, new text document, and then I checked through Windows 11 to see that I was able to get in there. So we can just uh, add a couple excla exclamation marks here. And when we hit save, we shouldn't have any kind of error because we have permission to this folder. There we go. And yes, we want to save. And we'll save anyway. Okay. Had some extra prompts there, but we do have our extra exclamations, so we're good. All right, let's check one of the other folders there. Under shares, let's take a look at our NAS home. I also have a hello text over there. You can see that this has some different content in there because this is coming from a different server. It's a different share altogether. And finally, let's look at the public shared. And we see that this indeed is the public share that was shown in one of my earlier videos when I was doing the Zential series. Okay, so that wraps up this week's video. Nice, simple way to automatically map different volumes from your network shares to a user account when they log in and unmap them when they log out. If you're enjoying the video series and you're finding my videos helpful, please make sure you hit that subscribe button, like the videos, let YouTube know that I'm doing a decent job here. Thanks and have a great week.